Hello everyone. In this lecture, let's configure our timer that is available in Atmega 16 microcontroller in input capture mode. Let's get started. So initially, let's find out the timers that is capable of performing input capture in this microcontroller Atmega 16. For that, we will go to the data sheet of Atmega 16 and in that you can see we have three timers, timer 0, timer 1 and timer 2. Let's go for the block diagram of timer 0 and you can see there is no input capture mode available in this timer. We have an output capture, we have an output compare unit but there is no input capture unit in timer 0. And let's see the timer 1. Here you can see there is an input capture unit in timer 1. So we will be having a channel or a pin for input capture using timer 1 in this microcontroller. We can use that pin for input capture mode in timer 1. And let's see the timer 2. Here also you can see there is no channels available for input capture. So we must be using only the timer 1 for this purpose. So for configuring this timer 1 in input capture mode we just want to implement these steps. So for configuring this timer 1 in input capture mode we just want to initially enable the global interrupt enable bit of our microcontroller. As I said before for using any of the interrupts of our microcontroller we just want to set this bit. This bit can be set using the function SCI. If you call this function, this will set the global interrupt enable bit of our microcontroller as we did in the previous lectures. And then in the next step, we just want to enable the required timer interrupt for our microcontroller. As I said, we are just going to use the capture interrupt of timer 1. So go to the register description of timer 1 and inside that go to the TIMSK register. This is the timer interrupt mask register. So here you can see there is one bit called TICIE1. That is nothing but timer 1 input capture interrupt enable. So if you want to use the input capture interrupt of the timer 1, you just want to set this bit. That is TICIE1 bit. So that can be done by using the line. So that can be done by TIMSK or equal to one left shift of TICI E1. So this will set the input capture interrupt of timer 1. And then we just want to set the mode of the timer. So we just want the timer to run in normal mode. So we just want to set these four bits that is WGM 13, 12, 11 and 10 bits to be 0, 0, 0, 0. So you can see these two bits 10 and 11 are available in the TCC R1 register here and this WGM 12 and 13 is available in the TCC R1 B register. So we just want to clear these four bits for setting the timer in normal mode as per this table. You can see if these bits are 0 the timer will run in normal mode that is it will start from the 0 and it will go to maximum value again it will start from 0 or minimum value and it will go to maximum value. I want the timer to run in that manner. So this thing we have done in the output compare mode tutorial. So I am clearing these four bits. So the timer will run in normal mode. Then I just want to set the prescaler for the timer. So I am setting the prescaler of the timer to be 1024. That can be done by using the LSP 3 bits CS 10, 11 and 12 of TCC R1B register. So I just want to set CS 12 and CS 10 bit and then I just want to clear the CS 11 bit. So that the prescaler is set to 1024. So I am doing that. You can see I am setting the 12 and 10 
and I am clearing the CS11. Now the timer clock will be 16 megahertz divided by 1024 that is 15,625 hertz. So this is the frequency of timer and time for one tick of timer is 1 divided by 15,625 that is 64 microseconds. You can see timer clock is 15,625 hertz and time for one tick of the timer is 64 microseconds. As per this prescalar, these are the frequency of timer and the time period of timer. And we just want to start the timer with initial value. We know the timer counter register is TC and T1. So we will give a 0 to this register for initializing the timer count value. So this will start the timer. And after that, we just want to select the edge of capture. Either the rising edge must be captured or falling edge must be captured. That can be selected using the register TCC R1B. Here you can see the sixth bit is ICES1 that is nothing but input capture edge select. And you can see here when the ICES1 bit is written to zero, a falling edge is used as trigger. And when this bit is written to 1, a rising edge will trigger the capture. So, we just want to capture the data on rising edge. So, we will set this bit in TCC R1B register. So, that can be done by writing TCC R1B R equal to 1 left shift of ICES1 rising edge. And that's it. The configurations are complete. And now we will implement the ISR function. So the ISR for capture is ISR timer 1 capped vect. This is the ISR for timer 1 capture entrant. So inside that what we will do is we will declare a variable called captured and we will store the input capture register value into this variable. So from the data sheet you can see the input capture register that is the capture register of input capture module is ICR1. So we will load this ICR1 value to this variable and that's it. These are all the configurations and whenever this interrupt function is called and executed the value of the capture register will be stored in the variable called capture. I am declaring this variable in the top so these are all the configuration lines that is required for configuring the input capture module of the timer 1 and we will implement and execute the programming lines in the next lecture. Thanks for watching.